and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. I'm your host, Terry Cato, and I would like to welcome back our resident sexpert, Miss Bree. Welcome back to the show. Hello, hello. Welcome. And this is actually Real Talk with Terry after hours, because this is the version of the show where we talk about um, things that are sometimes not PG. They can be R-rated. Um, and sometimes we've even gone a little bit um, sort of kind of X-rated. So that's why we refer to this as Real Talk with Terry after hours. So we are going to jump into this month's topic. And it is about men, sometimes women, but more often than not, men who have a problem with commitment in relationships. And I can just share my own story of dating and even being engaged to somebody who just had a horrible commitment issue. Um, I was years ago, I was dating this guy. He was my college sweetheart. And um, we were together for a number of years. Then we broke up when we both graduated from college and then reconnected, um, you know, during a difficult time in my life, which was when my mom passed away. And, you know, I just think I found myself running back to familiar arms, so to speak. <laughs> and that was him. And we ended up getting back together. We got engaged. And, um, you know, I don't know if he was trying to rekindle something that we had in college, but, you know, a number of years had passed since we graduated from college. So for me, quite a bit of growth had taken place. And I just always remember him saying that in a relationship was like, well, you know, I wanted to be how it was when we were in college. And I'm like, you know how many years ago that was? I'm like, it's not, it hasn't been a lot, but I'm like, that's been a minute <laughs> with, since we graduated from college. I'm like, I've grown. So I'm like, I don't know that um, this relationship will now will be how it was when we were in college. So, you know, you're at a phase in life and, and we were at that point where a lot of people were getting married and starting their families. And um, I just felt like we were there. And I was like, you know, hey, where is this going? You know, what is the next level for us? Is this just it? Are we trying to recapture something that we had in college? Or are we talking about building a life together? Like, where is this going? And, you know, he would always do the whole, well, you know, I know I want to be with you. And, but I'm just not ready for marriage. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, how long, you know, is it going to take you to get ready for marriage? Because I mean, I was at that place where I was ready for marriage. And, you know, kind of ready to go to the next level, talking about having children. And um, he was kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I know I want to be with you. And, I, and that's the kind of response that I would get, you know, in my situation was, you know, I know I want to be with you. And so he, you know, played the whole, he played the game and he proposed and I accepted and, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, so within the next nine months a year we're gonna get married and so as we kind of journeyed through that whole engagement it was a mess we were like on totally separate pages I don't even know if we were in the same book because <laughs> you know how it's like some people say yeah we, we're not on the same page mm -hmm. for me and him I don't even know if we were on the, if we were in the same book if we were even operating from the same playbook because here I am thinking, oh, okay, yeah, this engagement ring, a uh, very nice one, might I say. <laughs> this engagement ring, you know, we're, this means we're going to the next level. We're talking about building a life together. You know, yeah, he's in one state. I'm in another state. Let's talk about how can we reconcile this? Are you going to move where I am or should I move where you are? And again, you know, he said all the right things like, oh, you know, I'm going to move there. I'm going to move to Phoenix and, you know, help me find a job. And, you know, again, just just kind of stringing me along. And um, I'm like, well, are you more for a short engagement or a long engagement? And, you know, and for me, a red flag in the beginning, it should have been I was for a short engagement. He and, and to me, meaning short, meaning about a year, nine months to a year. I feel like you engage, then you go, you take that to the next level. Whereas he was talking about, no, I'm for a long engagement, like three and four and, you know, years. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, that's not going to work. So we could never find a middle ground for a whole marriage date, when to get married. And it just, of course, went downhill from there. And um, it became evident that I'm like, this is going nowhere. And I had to, you know, really tell myself that I was like, this is going nowhere. I'm like, and I even told him, I said, I just feel like 
you know, I'm just holding place. I'm just sitting on a shelf. I'm just holding a place in your life. I'm a placeholder. I'm like, I don't feel like I am the one that you want to build a life with. I'm like, I feel like I'm a placeholder and I'm just there until you're the one comes along. And I told him, I said, I feel like I deserve more than that. I was like, you know, if I'm not the one, you know, I'm like, let me go. I'm like, because I feel like you're holding up space in my life. <laughs> I'm like, because perhaps my one is out there too, and you're holding up space. So that being said, I see you laughing, Bree. Um, but and like I, I told you, because I have so many questions. So uh, that, that's fine. Um, but I was gonna, I was gonna tell you, I was gonna tell them. I told Bree at the beginning, I'm like, girl, these men who won't commit. I'm like, okay, I've been there, done that, wrote the book about it. So if you want to hear more about my story, I'm going to pitch my book. It's a shameless plug, No Longer a Bridesmaid by Terry Cato. Um, and my last name, Cato, C-A-T-O. So the book is out there, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's on all the book, um, all the book sites. So grab my book and, and you can hear more about my testimony. But yeah, but, but hey, go for it, Brie. Cause you were sitting there laughing. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, you were there, you kind of journey. You were my little cousin, but anyway. Yeah, I, I read the book. It's a great, great read. And funny, I read the book. However, I find myself still in that situation, <laughs> except for I haven't even gotten a ring yet. I haven't even gotten a girlfriend title yet. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so okay. I definitely relate. And so for you, my questions are how long? Well, first, let me ask, when it came to the engagement, how long were y'all dating before the engagement? Whoa, that's a good question. Um, let's see. So we were together um, in college for, I want to say about three years, maybe two and a half, three years or so. And then we broke up shortly after I graduated. And then we were apart for probably three, four years or so, maybe five years we were apart. And then we got back together. And then once we got back together, we were together for um, probably about nine months or, or some months before he proposed. And then we remained together uh, before it just before I just really went my own way. We probably remained together for about another year or maybe two, maybe another year or two. So, um, so it was kind of, you know, together, apart, back together. And then we were kind of like, okay, where is this going? Um, before I finally just walked away from it, I just kind of found my strength because it's interesting after we got engaged, I really started seeing red flags, like just kind of like ding, 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 ding. It was like, it wasn't just the fact that he had, um, an issue committing. It was just, it was other stuff too. And, and I do share that in the book. So then my next question is, can you recall or do you recall being the person who kind of facilitated the engagement, like put the pressure on him about the engagement? You know what, perhaps perhaps he probably not even it, I don't even think it was really um just the pressure from me I think he was feeling pressure from all sides because he was a little bit older than me um I think he was feeling the pressure from his family you know mm -hmm. because he was of a, a certain age because like I said he was a few years older than me so I think he was feeling the pressure from his family and his you know siblings and parents um and then like I said right around that time you know just a lot of friends sorors and frats they're getting married they're having children and then you know here he is he's kind of still single you know what did our grandmother always say fancy free and Scott what Scott free and fancy free so foot loose yeah. and, you know what I'm trying to say she <laughs> our grandmother has all these sayings it's some little saying which means that you just kind of out living your best life with no responsibility basically um, yeah so and that he was kind of that you know just really just kind of living his best life um and, you know I don't think he was even concerned about marriage commitment um you know he was just out living his best life and I think the pressure just was coming from all sides it was coming from family then it was coming from me and then he was kind of like okay let me put a ring on it and see how long can I quiet her but like I said what I felt like was that um I was just holding space 
you know, I just, I was like, I'm holding, I'm holding space in his life. I'm like, he doesn't have long, this isn't long-term plans in terms of um, wife, you know, and you just have, sometimes you have to come to realize that. And I had to come to realize. What's that? <laughs> but like, that's, that's the thing. I think that as women, we sometimes know deep inside, like, you know, okay, this is not going anywhere, but we still stay. So I want, that's what I want to know. Like, how did you find the courage to say, you know what, I'm calling this off because this is not going anywhere. Because a lot of times women give ultimatums, but we don't really mean the ultimatum or we never give the ultimatum because we are indeed afraid of the potential that the ultimatum does not go our way. Absolutely. So where did you find that strength to say, I don't care. Like, I do not care. I am not going to sit in this confusion or, or be in a level of this relationship where I'm stagnant. Like, how did you find that strength to do that? Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I leaned into my faith. You know, I leaned into, I'm better than this. Um, and that's not to say that anything was like necessarily wrong with him because a lot of people were like, you broke the engagement off. And then the next question would be like, you, did you give that ring back? <laughs> <laughs> did you? I did. I did. And that was a huge discussion, um, in our friend circle. And it was like, she gave the ring back. She gave the ring back. And I'm wow. like, of course I gave the ring back. Um, I'm like, I broke off the engagement and that ring, that was no joke. It was a, it was a really nice ring and I know he paid really good money for it. So um, I just felt like in all fairness, you know, yeah, I gave the ring back. Um, although he told me that I could keep it. Um, he was like, no, I want you to keep it. He, I was like, no, I, I just feel like holding on to the ring is like I'm holding on to something that I know I have to walk away from and it took a lot of prayer it, it took some tears um it just took me realizing that I was better than just holding space in a person's life I was like I want to be a wife I was like and there's nothing wrong with wanting what you want and there's nothing wrong with him wanting what he wanted but it's just if we're not on the same page like I told him I was like I feel like it's unfair to me to hold me up and you know that you don't have any plans of marrying me mm -hmm. I'm like you're saying oh yeah I know you're the one I want to be I'm like well when I'm like I need an expiration date on that <laughs> you know I'm like when so right. it just it took some time I mean it wasn't anything that I just kind of woke up and was like okay this is the day I mean it just took some time I had to think about it um, I had to really pray about it. I had to be mature and I had to really um, take note of the red flags that I was seeing. And I think a lot of times women, they overlook the red flags. And, and I even, I was one of those women, you know, things would happen. He would do something or he would say something. And then I'll be like, mm, whatever, or I would kind of blow it off. But really you have to have your eyes wide open when you're dating because um love will I, have you blind yes love will have you blind and so and, good sex. <laughs> yeah, you, oh my god and if the yes and if the sex is good you really blind <laughs> which is bad but I, I always tell single people dating is as good as it gets because when you marry them, don't think, oh yeah, the best is to come. You seeing them at their best. And I'll never forget, you know, one of my pastors and he would always say that he was like, dating is phony. He was like, because of course they're going to put forth their best mm -hmm. self all the time. Mm -hmm. But when you marry them, once you have them, that's when the real person comes out. And yes. I don't care how, how you, oh, I know him, I know her, but you do not know a person until you share a house with them, you share mm -hmm. a bed with them, you share a bank account with them, you try to come together and become one. Now, you do have a whole lot of married people that I like to say they're married, but they conduct themselves like singles. He mm -hmm. got his accounts, she got her yeah. accounts, he got his debts, she got her debts. But honestly, when you come together as one, you come together as one. It ain't no his his debts, her debts, it's y'all debts. 
you take it all on it ain't no her account his account it's our account it's our money you know and people yeah. take issue I, I take it's issue with that money. people take issue with that and that's why I tell people before you say I do you better know what you're saying I do too I mean, because you're, you should not be two married people living in a house operating like you single. I mean, when you come together as one, you cleave, you come together as one. And I'm at the point where I've talked to so many single people and I've been in this, you know, for so long. I mean, some people just are not marriage material. And I think people have to look in the mirror and like, be honest with themselves. I mean, it just say, am I really marriage material? And then the other thing I realized in this is that some people, um, they don't want to be married. That was probably the biggest revelation after I wrote my book and did like a little book tour and was talking to women and talking to men and just talking to people, you know, about the whole single journey. And that was probably the biggest revelation for me is that a lot of people were like, you know what, Terry, I, don't, I have no desire to be married. That was a shock for me. So that's the thing too. You, you got to know if you're dating a person, you know, in their heart, do they even desire to be married? You have some people, they like dating. They like the variety. They like the fact that they don't have to commit. So, you know, and, and that's a whole nother thing too. You know, some people have commitment issues for a variety of reasons. They will not commit. So that's what I was going to talk to you about next. Um, I know from my experience. So, well, let me explain a little bit of my situation. Talk about real talk. <laughs> so, I have been dating this guy. Um, and we met right after my separation from my previous ex. And it, it started off as a friendship. And then it developed into something more. But we're still in that limbo stage four years later. And so now we are currently in this whole, what are we doing? Because I honestly am over it. I am over it because to me, I'm like, it's excuse after excuse. Like, oh, I'm not ready yet. And he's very honest with me. Well, I'm still dating. I still want to do this. Then it's, well, I'm, I'm trying to figure out my career because, you know, I, I'm really just at this place where I really want to decide what I want to do in my life. Oh, well, you know, now I have these family issues that I really need to try to help my family work through. And I'm like, okay, you're not ready. Okay, okay, I get that. But like you said, I think that I had to find the strength to say, you know what, I have to be okay with us not being together, the idea of us not being together. I have to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And so now we are doing this whole break not talking not communicating you know sometimes absence make the heart grow thunder mm -hmm. but sometimes absence make you realize oh I didn't need this person yeah, absolutely so I'll update y'all later down the road and let you know how it goes but that's where we are now um and so I wanted to call that out because those are some of the reasons that I was giving you know um I know that a lot of men are not ready to commit because of financial reasons mm -hmm. which that is something that he you know had explained to me you know he's like Bree you're so good Mm -hmm. with your money and you're doing so well financially if I come to you I have to match your level mm -hmm. he also brought up my child you know Brie I can't play with you you have a child if I get with you I have to be ready to be a stepdad mm -hmm. I don't know if I want their responsibility on me right now Absolutely. and I'm like you know I appreciate the honesty but come on like you knew all of these things when you started dating me four years later like why are we still here Absolutely. why are we still here and we get along so well the chemistry is so great and all of these things but I'm coming to the realization that all of that is fine, but maybe the relationship or marriage or whatever is just not the capacity that he's meant to serve in my life. Absolutely. And you brought up a good point. You know, it's the whole excuses after excuses. It's funny because men, they don't have no new excuses because I heard all of those <laughs> too. the whole, oh, I need to get myself together. I'm working on a degree. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So um, yeah, same thing. I heard it all before. So, um, you know, you just have to find that strength, you know, and I don't agree with the whole ultimatum thing, because like you kind of hit on something earlier and I want to, before we wrap this up, I want to really hit on that. 
ladies, if you give a guy an ultimatum, you better be ready for him to walk away. Because like Bree said, you probably are not going to get the answer you want. Giving them an ultimatum, oh, I need to know by my birthday or I need to know by Christmas mm -hmm. or in, within six months because baby, you give him that ultimatum, he's like deuces, like see ya, you know, wouldn't want to be you. Because or it's going to be forced. It's yes. going to be, oh, well, let me just do it just to make her be quiet, but mm -hmm. I'm still going to move how I want to move. Absolutely. And the situations I've heard of, the guys don't even do that. They're out. It's like, you cannot give a guy an ultimatum. And then why would you want to give them an ultimatum? They should see you as the prize. You know what I'm saying? We yes. are the prize. And yes. not enough women realize that. And, you know, a lot of these guys, they walk around like, oh, I'm the gift, I'm the, uh, the gift to the women, you know, I'm the gift. And, and a lot of times women, we play right into that. But my thing is, no, I still have old school values. If you want me, and if you want everything that I bring to the table, then you got to work for it. You got to put in work. I'm not going to chase behind you. I don't, I don't believe in that. Like women chasing behind men. I'm like, if you got to chase behind him, that's not the one for you. I feel like the one for you, he will see your value. He will see your worth and he will pursue you. And I even have my own testimony of allowing somebody to take up space in your life. And you could be blocking the person that perhaps God has ordained for you. And for me, oh my, my story, I'm sitting up engaged to this guy my husband right now, who was to be my husband, is in my circle, and I'm so blinded, I can't even notice him, because I'm in something I shouldn't even be in, so he can tell this story clear as day, I remember exactly what he described, but you know what I don't remember? Him being around, and I, <laughs> I'm like, i I remember saying that and he was like I was there and I heard you I, that's how I knew you were engaged he was like I don't know what this dude had done but you were sitting up holding court with your girls to, talking to them and like mm -hmm, and he did that and I'm like oh my god I was so embarrassed because I totally remember what he is talking about it happened at my church you know we I still the dance ministry we were having like a dress rehearsal I was upset I'm talking to the other dance ministry leaders and he was like and I still remember you sitting in the chair in the vestibule and you talking to them and they listening I I, try, I re have replayed that in my mind a million times and I never see him in that scenario but he can describe that scenario to a T and he was like man she engaged so it took him like another, I think almost a year before he got up the courage to even ask me out because he thought she probably married it by this point in time. So he said, he was like, I just took a chance. I was like, let me just reach out to her and see did she get married? Did her, did her and this guy reconcile? So it took almost, like I said, a year because somebody else, the wrong person is holding a space in my life. And the person who ends up being my ordained husband, he hears this. So he is like, oh, okay, she's about to get married. But God can make it right. <laughs> so that is so crazy. crazy. Isn't that I, this crazy? Is so crazy that we're talking about this. I literally, this is the third time this week I've heard this. I've heard Steve Harvey say, I was watching a clip from him and he was talking about this same exact topic, which is so crazy because we had already discussed what we wanted to talk yes, about. So we did. That was so crazy mm -hmm. and I was talking to my sister and she brought it up randomly we weren't talking about you know me she kind of brought it up speaking about a situation that she's going through mm -hmm. and then now you are talking about taking up space and you know if someone is taking up that space then God can't give you the new blessing if you still have the old blessing in that space so I think that's so crazy isn't that crazy that's Very. amazing. It's, it's just amazing. So again, we can't allow somebody to take up space in our life because it could be blocking our blessing, you know, for all we know, it could be blocking our blessing. So we have to be careful with that. And, you know, it takes courage. I mean, you know, sometimes it takes time for us to get to that point where we realize, you know what, I'm better than this. I would much rather be single and happy than to be with somebody and be miserable and not knowing what place I have in their life or even if I have a place in their life 
You know, I mean, I think we all deserve love if that's what we want and we deserve it how we want it. You know, it shouldn't be issued out or, you know what I'm saying? So I just think that, you know, if you're with somebody, you're in a situation and they're having a hard time commit, you got to walk away from that. I mean, you got to find the courage. You got to just um, walk away. And I guarantee you, um, you know, I'm of the age and stage in life where um, I have seen people time and time again, they eventually get what they want. They get married. They find the love of their life. if That's what they want. But I would say, use this time to work on you, you know, live your best life. Now, don't even say, Oh, when I get married, this, or when I get married, that, because we're creatures of habit. It's like, if you want to do something, do it right now. When you're single, don't say, Oh, I'm going to start cooking when I get married. No, you start cooking. Now you deserve that. I did that. I was like, I'm going to start cooking. Now I'm going to cook. Like I have a husband, you know, like I'm going to wear that sexy lingerie when I get married. No, baby, wear your sexy lingerie right now. I just, I got a savage to order in there on my bed that I need to finish trying some stuff on but it's like no wear your sexy stuff now because again we're creatures of habit so it's like if you're not doing it now you're not going to just automatically turn on the light bulb you know or turn on the light when you get married and start doing something you know you start doing it now you you treat yourself well now um because again no man is going to treat you better than you treat yourself and people they notice how you treat yourself so you have to treat yourself well you have to love first of all it begins from within we have to love ourselves and so you got to look in the mirror and we have to say you know what I'm better than this I'm better than this so in closing what do you want to say I would just like to briefly um re-emphasize a point that you made you said earlier that it's okay to want to be married it's okay to want what you want from the relationship Relationship. And so I do want to reiterate that I know in this culture, a lot of times being single is glamorized, you know, oh, I'm gonna have, have a hot girl summer, you know, I'm the city boys up by one, I don't care about, you know, a relationship, I'm gonna do these dudes how they do me and, you know, and that's fine for women who truly have that mentality. But if you know, that's not you be real with yourself. If you know that that's not you, that's not what you want. You Absolutely. want compatibility. You want the companionship. You want the relationship, the marriage. It's okay for you to go after those things. Mm -hmm. So like you said, don't allow someone to make you their placeholder. And I'm also talking to myself, so don't attack me in the comments. I'm talking to myself too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so don't yeah. allow someone to make you your placeholder. And it's okay to ask for what you want and be okay with, Letting that person serve the role that they're supposed to serve in your life instead of you forcing the role that you want them to serve. Absolutely. Thank you. And with that, we will close Real Talk with Terry after hours. Again, you don't have to be the placeholder in anybody's life. You know, we deserve better than that. We are the prize and we have to carry ourselves like we are the prize. And ladies, let's stop running behind these men because there is somebody out there for you who will love and adore you for you. So don't let someone else block your blessing. <laughs> leave the space open. And with that, I leave you. Have a great day. And until next time, make this one count and we will talk later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>